Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So how many of you have an odd in-law or a relative who comes by to visit for a holiday meal maybe once a year? You know the one that I mean, the guy who drops over smoking unfiltered cigarettes, has a bit of a grisly appearance, rather rough and coarse around the edges. He's always blunt and to the point, never failing to let you know exactly what he's thinking or what he believes, even though it seems to take forever and it's oh so repetitive. We don't often know what to do with these sorts of people, how to handle them, but we love them anyways because they're family. As hard as it is to believe, over time, we might even develop a certain kind of fondness for these eccentricities. We are going to call this beloved relative Uncle Athanasius. Yes, you guessed it. This zany uncle is none other than the Athanasian Creed, confessed by the church, but just once a year. It has been deemed too theological, too argumentative, and just too darn long. It is all but ignored by the church except for this most holy festival of the church, Holy Trinity Sunday. This Sunday, old Uncle Athanasius comes to visit. And as much as there is, certainly is some mystery and complexity in this creed, nothing has changed about it in the truth that it confesses. After all, the scriptures tell us that God does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13.8 So it is good for us to jump into the deep end of the theological pool and tread water there, even if it is only but once a year. St. Augustine was walking along the beach one day trying to figure out the divine mystery of the Holy Trinity. He paused as he walked and he watched a little child dig a hole in the sand. Then the boy went and got several pails full of seawater and poured them into this hole that he dug. Augustine finally asked the little boy what he was doing. I'm putting the ocean into this hole, he said, very matter-of-factly. And for Augustine, this was a moment of divine revelation as he realized that he had been very much trying to do the same thing with the mystery of an infinite God, just as that child had been trying to do with the sea. And we are Christians who live at a time where mystery and deep theological questions have been thrown out into the junkyard. Nobody really seems to care about right doctrine or biblical theology anymore. In fact, people choose a church based on its programs or its music or uh, experience or worldly ideals, regardless if they teach the truth of God's word or not. Nobody has the time to simply sit and be still and know that God is God. If we want theology at all, we tend to want it to go like fast food. We want it our own way in bite-sized nuggets that we can dip into a zippy sweet and sour sauce. But you know what? There's a wee bit of a problem in treating our faith and theology as if it were fast food. And the main problem is the ingredients list. Eating food that may contain traces of this and traces of that, well, it's a little bit nasty, a little unhealthy. Think twice before chowing down on those theological propeller pigeon chicken nuggets. The real deal, all natural, 100% organic truth, is that the Christian faith is theological. Our faith is steeped in divine mystery that is fully beyond us. And yet, God in his mercy, the Holy Spirit illuminates our hearts and minds to grasp hold of that mystery by faith. And the central mystery of the Christian faith is that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, yet one divine essence, equally glorious, equally majestic. Trying to understand this mystery, trying to figure it out, how it can be, is impossible. Much like Augustine's revelation about the little boy pouring the whole ocean into the hole on the beach. How can the whole ocean be contained into such a small space, one wonders. And that is much like trying to cram the infinite awesomeness of God 
into our human brains. It's pretty tricky, yay, impossible. So why do we even care then about the Athanasian Creed? If it's impossible for us to wrap our minds around this mystery of it all, why do we even have a creed that seeks to try to flesh this out for us, these intricate little theological details? Well, in a nutshell, the answer is because it's necessary. The words of the Athanasian Creed preserve the truth of Christianity for us. They preserve the beautiful mystery of God, the Holy Trinity. It's much like having a beautiful diamond or a gemstone that shimmers in the light. The men of the congregation may occasionally catch their wives looking down and admiring the diamond engagement ring that they got from y'all y'all from time to time, watching it shimmer and sparkle in the light, but knowing that its value isn't in the money it costs to buy it or how rare it is, but rather in what it represents. The love and commitment of your adoring husband. You can join me now. Aww. One of my... (laughs) Or maybe not. (laughs) One of my favorite hymns of all time, Holy God, we praise thy name. It says in the very last verse, it says, Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name thee. Though in essence only one, undivided God, we claim thee. And adoring, bend the knee while we own the mystery. The divine mystery of God being three persons, undivided, yet one God, is not meant to be figured out. It's not meant to be scientifically dissected. Rather, it is meant to be owned. It is meant to be held, admired, pondered, and believed, above all else, because it is eternal truth. That this Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, has given to us himself for us and our salvation. It is, as the Creed confesses, the small c Catholic faith, that is, universal, believed everywhere, always, and by all, by which all who desire to be saved must hold on to. It shows us that the love of God gives us a sketch of his depth and grace for us his sinful creatures. It gives us special focus on Jesus, the Messiah, and his amazing passion for us, that he would become flesh, that he would die on the cross for us and rise again from the dead, the very crown jewel of the faith, yet another mystery beyond our understanding. Our Lutheran funeral and committal services are awesome because they are chock full of God's grace and mercy that accompanies this mystery. Every time I go graveside with a mourning family, I love speaking these words. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by His blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be His temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. These words are awesome. They give us so much comfort because they give us a blessed assurance that Jesus Himself promises to be with his church. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age, our Lord promises, that even in death, God, the Holy Trinity, remains with us, assuring us that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he has forgiven all of our sins. Even the times that we have doubted his reality, forsaken his presence, or even tried to dissect the undivided triune essence, that God is Holy Trinity must be kept at the forefront of our hearts and minds always because it is essential to salvation. This is why we begin the liturgy in God's holy name. We remember our baptism in God's triune name. We bless graves in God's triune name. We even end our prayers in God's triune name. This is why we make the sign of the cross with our hands, with our thumb and index and middle fingers coming together into three to remind us of our triune God. And as the other aside, the other two fingers go down to represent and remind us of our Lord's true divine essence and his human nature. So the two natures of Christ coming together. We constantly return to our catechism and to the scriptures to keep his word and to remember that it is this Holy Trinity is the one who created us, the one who provides for us, the one who preserves us, 
the one who is our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord, the one who calls us by the gospel, who gathers us and sanctifies us, that all three persons of the Holy Trinity are involved, and they are all one God. For now, it is enough for us to own the mystery. Therefore, as God's people, cherish it, admire it, talk to your friends and family about it, contemplate it, ponder it, and experience God in his Trinitarian fullness. Not just once a year when old Uncle Athanasius drops by to visit. Own the mystery, yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of our triune God, amen. And now may the peace of God and the love of Christ Jesus be with you now and always. In his precious name, amen.